And after that, I decided to become a movie star. Peter Dinklage is an American actor and film producer who has many outstanding works in his portfolio. The actor destroyed all stereotypes about appearance and achieved fame not because of his condition, but as a result of hard work and perseverance. In this video, we will tell you about the life of a small actor with a huge talent. Peter Dinklage, how Tyrion from Game of Thrones lives and how much he earns. Peter Hayden Dinklage was born on June 11, 1969 in Morristown, New Jersey in an ordinary family. His mother, Diane, worked as a music teacher in elementary school and his father, John Carl, was an insurance agent, but he was out of work for several months a year. The actor has German, Irish and English blood in his veins at the time of Peter's birth, the family was already raising a son, Jonathan. In early childhood, the future actor was diagnosed with a rare gene mutation, achondroplasia. This is a type of dwarfism in which the growth of limbs slows down. Although the head and body develop according to the norm, it is noteworthy that only Peter was diagnosed with this condition. The rest of the family members are absolutely healthy. At the age of five, the boy underwent surgery to straighten his legs, but doctors couldn't do more. In adolescence, Dinklage's height stopped at four feet five inches, while his weight was 77 pounds. Peter attended the Del Barton Catholic School for boys. Because of his appearance, he was often bullied by his peers, and because of that, he became hot-tempered and unsociable. In an interview, Dinklage admitted that he managed to cope with the pressure of society thanks to his family, who taught him to accept himself. With age, the boy began to treat his condition with humor, which added to his confidence. In the fifth grade, Peter played the main role in the school production of The Velveteen Rabbit and received such a storm of applause that he decided to become an actor. After that, he participated in many productions until graduation. In his spare time, Dinklage developed his talent by performing puppet shows for neighbors with his older brother. By the way, Jonathan also had good acting skills, but his love for music prevailed and he became a professional violinist. An interesting fact is that Bruce Springsteen's manager lived next door to the Dinklages. The famous musician often rehearsed there and according to Peter's family, it was loud and they didn't like it at all. After graduating from high school in 1987, the actor enrolled at the Bennington Theatre College in Vermont, where he chose to major in playwriting. There the guy proved himself as a talented and hardworking student, as well as a wonderful friend. Peter spent his extracurricular time, like all ordinary students, at loud parties with alcohol and music. He even performed with his own punk band, Wizzy, where he played trumpet and was one of the singers. In memory of his carefree youth, Dinklage has a noticeable scar along his face, which he received during one of his concerts, jumping on stage. In 1991, the young man graduated from college. After that, he and his best friend Ian Bell went to New York, where they planned to open a theater company. The guys didn't have much money, so they rented a cheap apartment in Brooklyn with a horde of rats and no heating. For a long time, Peter couldn't find a job, theater groups didn't hire him, and movie producers only offered him to play leprechauns or gnomes. He refused to take them on principle, since most of them mocked people with dwarfism. After numerous casting failures, Dinklage got a job at a data processing company but the money he earned was barely enough to pay the rent. Peter admitted that at that time he could often afford only a pack of chips a day. In the end, the guys were evicted for non-payment, after which Peter had to ask friends for a place to stay. Soon Dinklage got lucky and received a role in an independent movie. 
In 1995, the aspiring actor made a screen debut in the comedy drama Living in Oblivion, where his partner on the set was Steve Buscemi, who became his good friend. Do you know anyone who's had a dream with a dwarf in it? No! I don't even have dreams with dwarves in them. The only place I've seen dwarves in dreams is in stupid movies like this. In the film, Peter actually played himself, an actor who, due to dwarfism, is offered only stereotypical roles. However, despite the fact that Dinklage's acting received high reviews from critics, he couldn't find an agent. In 1996, Peter starred in Mickey Rourke's action movie, Bullet, but was not even listed in the official credits. In subsequent years, he only received minor roles in low-budget films, among which the most notable were Safe Men, Human Nature, Just the Kiss, 13 Moons, and the TV series Third Watch. In 2003, Dinklage appeared in the drama The Station Agent, where he was cast as a reclusive dwarf doomed to endless ridicule by others. Really angry. About what? Being a dwarf. This role was a real breakthrough in his career and brought him many nominations for film awards, including the Screen Actors Guild Award for outstanding performance by a male actor in a leading role. In the same year, the actor starred in the Christmas comedy film Elf and in the drama Tiptoes, where his partners on the set were Gary Oldman, Matthew McConaughey, and Kate Beckinsale. Peter also appeared on the stage of the New York Public Theater, playing the titular role in Shakespeare's Richard III, which was his longtime dream. Subsequently, Dinklage performed in many more plays. His love of the theater played a crucial role in the actor's personal life. Back in the late 90s, he met a theater director, Erica Schmidt, and a strong friendship arose between the young people based on mutual interest in dramatic art. And over the years, it turned into love. In 2004, Peter proposed to his beloved, and a year later, the couple had a modest wedding. In 2005, Dinklage starred in the TV series Life As We Know It and Entourage, the drama The Baxter, the comedy surviving Eden, and in the drama Lassie, where he played an artist of a traveling circus. Then his filmography was replenished with the TV series Threshold and Nip Tuck, the romantic fantasy Penelope, and the crime drama Find Me Guilty, which also starred Vin Diesel. Despite the fact that the film failed at the box office, Peter's acting received high reviews from critics. In 2007, Dinklage played a mad scientist in the family fantasy Underdog, and also starred in the British comedy Death at a Funeral as Peter, who appears at a funeral ceremony and declares that he was the lover of the deceased, demanding money from his relatives for silence. How do you think that makes me feel? No, I'll tell you how that makes me feel. It, cheap. Like a cheap slut. Don't you think I deserve something? The film became so popular that three years later, they made an American remake where Peter again played the same character, only with a different cast. In 2008, the actor appeared in the movie Chronicles of Narnia, Prince Caspian, where he played the dwarf Trumpkin. After the release of the film, critics unanimously stated that Dinklage failed to eliminate the stereotypical image, and he himself considered participation in this project a great disappointment. Then Peter's filmography was replenished with such works as the sitcom 30 Rock, the drama St. John of Las Vegas, the drama I Love You Too, the thriller The Last Rites of Ransom Pride, and the dark comedy Pete Smalls is Dead, where the man also acted as an executive producer. In 2011, Dinklage appeared in the romantic comedy drama A Little Bit of Heaven, as well as in the acclaimed series Game of Thrones, based on the series of novels A Song of Ice and Fire by George Martin. What you see is a dwarf. If I had been born a peasant, they might have left me out in the woods to die. Alas, I was born a Lannister of Casterly Rock. Things are expected of me. It is noteworthy that Peter became the first approved actor 
who didn't even participate in the casting. In the series, Peter played Tyrion Lannister, nicknamed the Imp, who led a rampant lifestyle. After the premiere of the first season, Dinklage's photo appeared on the cover of Rolling Stones, Playboy magazine called him a sexy man, and GQ awarded him the title of Stud of the Year 2011. The actor himself is skeptical about these titles, as he doesn't believe that in reality, women will be interested in people with dwarfism. Subsequently, Peter starred in seven more seasons of Game of Thrones, until 2019. In an interview, he admitted that when he got his hands on the script, he started reading it from the end to make sure that his character would live to see the last episode. At the same time, with each season, the popularity of his character only increased, and eventually he took second place in the ranking of the best characters of the series, second only to his on-screen sister, Cersei. At some point, I want to hear how a Night's Watch recruit became King of the North. As long as you tell me how a Lannister became Hand to Daenerys Targaryen. Long and bloody tale. To be honest, I was drunk for most of it. By the way, Lena Headey, who played Cersei, is a longtime friend of Peter, and he advised the directors to invite her to the role. It's worth mentioning that among the actors of the series, Peter received the largest number of awards, four Emmys, a Golden Globe Award, a Saturn Award, and a Screen Actors Guild Award. And the New York Times called Peter Dinklage one of the eight actors who turned television into art. Game of Thrones has become the most successful HBO project of all time, as well as the most expensive in the fantasy genre. According to some reports, Peter's fee per episode was $150,000 in the first two seasons, $300,000 in the third and fourth seasons, half a million in the fifth and sixth seasons, and the last season brought him $1.1 million per episode. Thus, Dinklage's total income from filming in the series exceeded $30 million. In between Game of Thrones seasons, the actor participated in other projects, voicing cartoon characters Scrat's Continental Crack Up Part 2, Ice Age Continental Drift, Rick and Morty, and Angry Birds Movie 2. He also voiced Tyrion in the video game based on the series. In addition, Peter appeared in several films, in 2013, his filmography was replenished with the drama A Case of You and the comedy Nights of Badassdom. And in 2014, he appeared in the dramas Lowdown and The Angriest Man in Brooklyn, as well as the fantastic action movie X-Men Days of Future Past, where he played the evil scientist Bolivar Trask. By the time you see the need for my program, it'll be too late and you will have lost two wars in one lifetime. It's worth noting that Dinklage wanted to star in this film so much that he agreed to the role without even reading the script. His acting received high reviews from critics and he himself was nominated for the MTV Channel Award for Best Villain. In 2015, Peter starred in the drama Taxi and in the fantastic comedy Pixels, which was criticized and was nominated for the Golden Raspberry Anti Award. In 2016, Dinklage, together with his business partner David Ginsberg, founded a film production company, Estuary Films. In the same year, his filmography was replenished with the comedy The Boss, and in the following year, he appeared in the detective Rememory, the dramas Three Christs and Three Billboards Outside Ebbing, Missouri, starring Francis McDormand and Woody Harrelson. You two boyfriend and girlfriend? Early stages, you know. Is that right? We had a couple dates. The latter picture received high reviews from critics, and the creators, along with the actors, received many awards, including two Oscars and four Golden Globes. Despite the fact that Peter himself didn't receive anything for his role, the audience noted his image as one of the most memorable. In 2018, the actor played the main role in the fantastic drama I Think We're Alone Now, and in the biographical film My Dinner with Hervé which tells about the last days of the French actor, Hervé Villachaise. Being famous is like being drunk, except the whole world is drunk with you. 
By the way, in both films, Peter was also a producer. In the same year, Dinklage appeared as a giant dwarf in the superhero movie Avengers Infinity War, which became one of the highest grossing films in history. What happened here? You were supposed to protect us. Asgard was supposed to protect us! Asgard is destroyed. In 2019, Peter played a cameo role in the comedy Between Two Ferns, the movie. And next year he starred in the thriller, I Care A Lot. He also voiced one of the characters of the cartoon, The Croods, A New Age. In 2021, Dinklage appeared in the title role in the musical, Serrano, based on the plot of the stage play of the same name, the script of which was written by his wife. Freak. <laughs> Is that it? Have you exhausted your dictionary of scorn? Interestingly enough, he literally begged Erica to choose him for this role, as he dreamed of singing on stage. However, unlike the original work, the disadvantage of the main character is not a huge nose, but a small stature. For his brilliant performance in the musical, Peter was nominated for a Golden Globe. Now Peter's acting career is still on the rise. In the summer of 2022, the comedy American Dreamer premiered. Also the filming of the movies She Came To Me, The Toxic Avenger, and Brothers has already been completed. And The Hunger Games, The Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and Hit Pig are at the stage of filming. To date, Dinklage's fortune is estimated at $25 million, which includes film royalties and advertising contracts. In 2017, Peter starred in an advertising short film of the beer brand Estrella Dam. And in 2018, he rapped in a commercial for Doritos and Mountain Dew with Morgan Freeman. The actor also advertised Cisco's The Network Intuitive. The funny thing is that Dinklage, having become famous, signed such a serious contract because at the beginning of his career, he was only offered the role of elves in Christmas advertising, which he refused. The celebrity carefully hides his personal life from the public. Peter doesn't have social media accounts and is very angry when paparazzi are watching his family. The media learned that in December 2011, his wife gave birth to his daughter, whose name they don't disclose. And in September 2017, another child appeared in the family, whose gender and name are also unknown. According to some reports, the children don't inherit their father's condition. Dinklage and his family lived in Manhattan for a long time, where he could often be seen walking his dog or riding a scooter. A few years ago, the couple moved to a country house with a huge garden, which Peter enjoys taking care of. But all this remains hidden from the cameras and the prying eyes of fans. The actor owns a Chrysler 300, which was designed specifically for his condition. For obvious reasons, he also orders custom-made outfits or buys clothes in children's stores. Dinklage has been a vegetarian since the age of 16, when he needed to eat meat on the set of Game of Thrones, instead of real meat, they used tofu or just fake food. Peter is also a member of several animal rights organizations. One, he voiced the video Face Your Food on behalf of PETA, promoting eating vegan food for ethical reasons. The actor was repeatedly asked if he, as a celebrity, wanted to represent the interests of people with dwarfism. Dinklage replied that even now, he doesn't always manage to put up with his condition. So it would be hypocritical to try to help people cope with something that he can't cope with himself. However, he still took advantage of his popularity to draw attention to one incident. In 2012, in his speech at the Golden Globe ceremony, he mentioned the actor with dwarfism, Martin Henderson, who was thrown by a drunk rugby player at a New Zealand bar. As a result of the fall, Henderson suffered spinal damage and eventually died of his injuries in 2016. Peter became world famous after the release of Game of Thrones, but his filmography is full of other outstanding works. 
What movie with Peter Dinklage do you like the most? If you like the video, leave a like and also subscribe to the channel so that you don't miss anything interesting.